Yeah, yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Raw Truth Show. We here. We live. Direct. We got my man, Kenny, Kenneth K.P. Pinnell from Rose Classic. From Rose Classic, the top-notch, top-notch women's basketball league out in Brooklyn. But I feel is the top-notch women's league in New York City. Yes. Welcome, my man, Kenny. KP. I'm going to call you KP. Forget all that. I know the yeah. government name, that's but everybody know you by KP. Yeah, that's what they call me, man. I appreciate you having me on your show, man. Excited to talk about, you know, Rose Classics for a few minutes, so glad to be here. Yes, thank you for thank you for being on the show. Um, I'm just going to run down the topics that I want us to hit because um, this, is, this is a really crucial time right now through the crisis and everything um you know kids can't play and stuff like that so we're going to touch first we're going i want to touch on when did rose classic start and who's the founder then when did you get where did you get the name from how long did it take to build the top women's basketball tournament who is who no how is this crisis affecting recruiting, especially for kids that need the tournament for the last look? New facility and location. What upcoming events? And how are you going to be able to have a safe tournament with this crisis? And what type of precautions will you take for a positive tournament? productive tournament i'm sorry so let's start it off by first you introducing yourself and letting everybody know who you are and what do you do for rose classic all right uh again thanks thanks a lot for having me uh, my name is kenneth pinnell everybody knows me as kp i, I am not a new yorker I've been in New York for about 20 years now, but I'm, I'm born and bred, you know, from a very small town in Virginia, uh, a place called Hurt, Virginia. Uh, and I moved to New York to uh, pursue some, I was working on Wall Street for, for uh, many, many years on the insurance side. Um, I got introduced to Rose Classic kind of by accident. Um, as you, as you People may know or may not know Anton Marchand, uh, Cleon Silkhide, Troy. All those guys are the guys who really facilitated Rose Classic. But Rose Classic came out of uh, another tournament that we all do in the summertime called Conrad McCray Youth League. Um, with Conrad, uh, we we got kids from you know five and under all the way up to the high school ages. My son's been playing in Conrad since he was two. And he's eight now, so that, that tells you, you know, the extent of it. But, but what was built out of that was um, we, we saw that girls were coming to play with the boys a lot. And one girl in particular was, was, was killing the boys named Epiphany Prince. If, if people are familiar with who she is, she's uh, obviously a WNBA star now, plays, you know, overseas and, and just has a great reputation. So, you know, what Anton saw was uh, a way to do something for the girls, and he kind of modeled everything he did after what IS8 was doing at the time. And, and as you know, IS8 has been a staple on the for many, many years. So yeah. um, Rose Classic has been around for, for about 15 years now. I think this would have been our 15th year uh, this spring. Um, and in Rose Classic, you, you kind of got to be a jack of all trades. So I started off in Rose Classic as actually the DJ. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, Anton introduced me. We a Anton and I kind of met, and we were just always at the same places, whether we were in the gym playing ball or, or at the gym working out. And he always used to tell me, yo, man, come by and see what I'm doing. Uh, you know, And I said, girls basketball? Yeah, I don't think I would be interested. Right. <laughs> However, I, I I went to uh, 
and went and played at Old Dominion University, which back when I was there, which was many, many years ago, they were really good, and they even went to the Final Four. Okay. So I, I was familiar with, you know, the girls' basketball culture. I had made many friends in the culture, so I knew a lot of people. So actually going and sitting in, in Rose Classic and seeing some of these girls play kind of changed my perception and, and brought me back to what, you know, girls' basketball really is. It's, it's the competition piece of it because, you know, sometimes – as an outsider look, looking in, you look at girls' basketball, they, they they can't play, they're not athletic, you know, there's no dunks, there's, but then you see that they have a better skill set than the boys most of the time. Right, you know, right. Their fundamentals are a lot better. Um, they think the game a little bit more than the boys because most of the time the boys play off of athleticism. Um, so, again, I, I went and sat in the gym, and, and Anton, you know, said, hey, you might not be interested, but at least come and be my DJ. So, okay. um, you know, Anton's of music fame and, you know, wanting to be a part of, you know, what he was doing anyway, I said, okay, I'll, I'll come in and, and, and I'll do those things. So, you know, he definitely groomed me to be where I am with the, with the organization today, which is, you know, I help facilitate the tournament. I, I do a lot of the college coaches contact, I do, hey man, I sweep, sweep the floor if I have to, you know, we all do a, a, a lot of things, you know, within Rose Classic, and, and to be within Rose Classic, you have to be able to do that, you have to keep score every now and then, you have right. to uh, make sure to rest on time uh, uh, every now and then, and when they first started off, you know, Anton and, 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 and Silk and those guys had to referee. You know, you have to be a jack of all trades when, when you're dealing with Rose Classic. Uh, if you've been in Rose Classic, you understand it. Uh, it's, it's the feel is it's like no other. It's, it's a smaller tournament. Uh, well, not a smaller tournament as, as far as size, but the gym is, is a, it's a junior high gym. Okay. Uh, you you got you got to be able to boogie in there, man. If you can't, you know, shuck and jive in that gym, you, you kind of get exposed and, you know, Right. It's grown so much over the years, but you know, going back to to your question, you know, started with uh, I think it was uh, eight teams. Uh, some of the prominent teams in the area back then was obviously New Heights, um, Exodus, uh, I think Liberty Bells uh, were some of the, the more prominent teams that came out, and you know, we've grown that to now we're turning teams away. I mean, we, we try to go on an average of about 60 for uh, the spring and fall Excuse, sessions. Wait, say it again. What? 64 teams? 60, 60 teams, yes. That's mm-hmm. just, just just in the high school division, though. Then wow. Then we do another 24 for the uh, middle school and then another 12 to 14 with the younger elementary kids. So it, it's, it's definitely a... a, a a jam-packed uh, tournament, and we get teams from. We, we've had teams from as far as Arizona. We 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 get a good influx of teams from Canada, uh, and you know you know just like anything else, man, it's it's about relationships. Right. Once you treat people well, they always want to come back, and and that's been our staple for 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 our existence. It, you know you know how Anton is. He, yeah. he demands excellence. Yeah, you know, yes. and we all demand excellence. Right. So you know, he's groomed me to be you know part of this women's basketball, girls' basketball culture because it's bigger than basketball. It's, right. It's about the culture. It's about you know pushing these girls forward. It's about helping these girls become productive women. And and sometimes you know girls that come from the inner city don't always have a male figure. And Anton has been that male figure for many years. Um, the girls look up to him, and the girls look up to me now, too, you know, for, for what we do to him. Right, right. Um, Yeah, well, I don't know if you know, but um, me and Anton played together in junior college. Okay. So he's the one that became, he's the one that made me the All-American that I was, because without him, I was not going to be an All-American. So that's how me and Anton that's have the uh, relationship. Yeah. And he's also my son's godfather. So 
that's my how you know. Also. Right. Okay. So where did they get the name from? How did they come up with Rose Classic? Well, they they wanted to put something together that was synonymous with women, and you know it it was just hey let's come up with a name that you know if you see a, a something that you know women like or women identify with, and so they came up with the name Rose. Okay. And then you know, I, I I heard the story that they said well we wanted to make make it something classic also, and then there it was Rose Classic. There you so go. we know that's very synonymous with you know what women like and 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 you know having that rose uh, logo is is just synonymous with what we think excellence is within women. Right. Well, I you know I thought it might be called dime classic or something because diamond classic or something because you know women love some dang on diamonds. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, so how long did it take to build? up to be in the top notch women's league tournament. Now when you say youth, you talk about all this everything is all women, correct? Correct. It's 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 nothing but women and you, you you're making a, a statement, we're not finished yet. So we we're, we're still building. Wow. We're still build say you know, one thing about us is we're we're not afraid to learn. And you know, myself I travel all around the country and go to other tournaments. I just have great relationships with, you know, other tournament directors and, you know, they give me kind of carte blanche to come into their tournament and I see things that, you know, they do well that, you know, I try to bring back to Rose Classic. So, um, let me say this, with with the partnerships that, that uh, Rose Classic has, it is definitely enhanced what Rose Classic is. I mean, obviously we're, we're like no other tournament because we uh, give uniforms and right do those uniforms, we, we require you to wear our uniforms while you're playing in our tournament. Right. If you don't have your uniform or, you know, once we've given you your uniform and you come back the next time and you don't have your uniform, you can't play. Right. It's a staple of what we are. And Nike has been a big part of that. You know, Anton told me the story of, you know, how he approached it with Nike. And at first, they, they really didn't, you know, see the vision. But he said he got a phone call, and they said, hey, I'm, uh, we're going to try this out. So now we get a, a, a staple of, of uniforms every season for our fall and our spring season. And we get shooting shirts. So once those girls get that, it makes them feel like they have arrived. So right. putting that rose pass uniform on them, they feel validated. Right. So that's been part of a, a lure of rose pass getting uniforms, uh, playing in the gym that's, you know, kind of tight. And, and, you know, we, we even have some dead spots on the floor. But it's just the allure of, of being in that gym, seeing those signs, seeing the girls are, who've been in the Hall of Fame in there. That's what's grown Rose Classic. And then, obviously, the relationships that we've built with every, you know, AU program. So uh, we, we treat people like they're family. And when they come in their, in their gym, they know they're going to get good competition. Hey, we're not always going to get along because, you know, refs right. will be refs. Right. That's, not, that's, that's not our responsibility. We hire quality refs. Um, but they know we're, they're going to be treated fairly. We don't have, we don't care who wins. You know, we like it when, you know, new teams come in and win and, and, and perform at a high level. So, again, we are still building what Rose Classic ultimately will be and I think it'll, it'll never be a ceiling on that I think we'll continue to grow and grow and you know with the with Anton on the mic and we've had Joe Pope I'm, I'm sure who you're familiar with yeah. on the mic and then you know I've DJ before we've had you know DJ Authorized who's very popular within the Nike circuit he's DJ there before and then we're, we're grooming the younger kids to, to do some of these things so now uh, we have a, a DJ Court DJ Killer Court, who I saw was in a DJ battle the other day on Instagram Live. She's our house DJ now. Okay. She's somebody I know I helped groom, and now she's way better than me. <laughs> uh, we, have, we have other kids that are, are, are starting to do the mic, and they're starting to get the lingo and, and do certain things. So we're trying to train the younger generation to carry on this tradition. And, and again, that's just a part of building 
what this is because you know we use the the community this is a community based tournament we right. use the community we use the kids to to facilitate a lot of the things that we're doing we can't do this forever but, you know as you see I'm, <laughs> we 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 getting older and you know it's to the point where we want to sit back and see the fruits of the labor too right right so let me ask you um is there a waiting list to be able to get into your tournament now? Absolutely. Okay. It's, uh, <laughs> we we generally get, uh, and, and, and here's, the, here's the crazy thing. We generally get 150 teams trying to get in. This, and I'm just speaking probably from the, the senior division. Now, a lot of times programs want to bring, you know, four or five of their teams in. Right. And it gets to the point where I, I'm getting phone calls, Anton's getting phone calls. Come on, please, we got to get in, we got to get in. But you know, sometimes we, we, you know, the word no is <laughs> has to be said. Right. Um, there is there is an extensive waiting list uh, for Rose Classic, but again, you know, we we, we want to keep the quality of what we're doing in our tournament also. So you know, I do a lot of scouting for Rose Classic, meaning I'll go around and see. You know the level of competition that some of these teams have. You know, if I feel like that they can compete at a high level, right? You know, we definitely invite them in, and and we do like the newer teams, but we still got to pay homage to some of the older teams who've been with us for fifteen plus years. You know, the the, the uh, positive directions of the world. You know, they have been a staple in in our organization for for many many years. They aren't as strong as they usually are, but. I know they're growing their brand, so we make sure that they participate in our, our uh, leagues. We have a lot of large influx from upstate uh, New York that like to come down for a weekend to play. So we, we've seen, you know, teams come and go, but, you know, the teams who really love what we do, we always make sure they participate in, in what Rose Classic is and what Rose Classic is doing. Okay. Now, how many games do each team play? Per year, like you know, so, per tournament. Look, regular season, they play five games. Okay. Out of town teams, out of town teams usually play their five games in the weekends. So if I get my guys from county to come down, they usually play three games on Saturday and two games on Sunday. Oh wow! And we try to get them out of there. We 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 start them late on Saturday, about a twelve o'clock game. Uh, 12, uh, uh, 3, and uh, a 5, and then on Sunday, we, we first thing in the morning, they, they're they there at 8.30, and they're out of there by 12 o'clock, because we want to get them back on the road, and that's about an eight-hour drive, um, and then after their five regular season games, they get, if, if they perform well enough, they get to uh, participate in the playoffs. Okay, uh, so sorry, do- sorry for cutting you off real quick. So I play the five games. I'm undefeated. Okay. Automatically into the playoffs. Automatically into the playoffs. Okay, gotcha. Uh, but you know, sometimes all the teams can't come back from because we 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 help with scheduling. So we allow teams to kind of give us their blackout dates when they can come, when they can't come, and you know, playoffs we can't do that. It's kind of win or go home type of thing. And if you're traveling, you know, from Canada or, you know, Virginia, deep Maryland, um, you know, you got to, if you're coming back to the playoffs, if you lose, that's it. Right. So you got to be confident enough in your team to know, all right, we're going to get a few games out of this because, right. you know, we can't, we can't really change the rules for that. So you, you play your five games, and the local teams, we kind of spread their games out. We, we do allow them to have blackout dates, but we want the local teams to play more of the out-of-town teams. So we want the more powerful teams to exit this new heights of the world to play those teams from Canada, the U-plays, the Toronto Matrix type of uh, teams. So, yeah, you play your five games, and you it's every game counts. Got you. I mean... You don't want to come out of there two and three because that looks like you might not make the playoffs. <laughs> you ain't coming to the playoffs, no. <laughs> you, you, you're in trouble, but, you know, three and two, four and one, you got a pretty good chance. Okay. And, and we only accept 32 teams in the playoffs. So, you know, that's Dang. literally half the teams that that uh, come into the league. So you you got to be ready to play. You can't take a game off. You, you talk about your, your player ain't here, that's on you. 
Right. Make sure right. the player gets there. That's and, right. And one thing about Rose Classic I, I've seen over the years, some of these kids care more about Rose Classic than they do their own high school teams. Yes, I understand that. They, Just like the they, AAU they, circuit, too. Exactly. They'd be like, I got to make sure I'm there for my Rose Classic game. I don't care what y'all doing over here. I got to make sure I'm there for Rose Classic. So, you know, we're very, very careful about scheduling and we, we, we're considerate for what people's needs are. But ho- however we are, you know, firm, like once you get the schedule, we can't change it. Right. Because, you know, people want you to change things that they they understand. They don't understand sometimes that we change this one game, we're changing 50 other games too. Right. So, you know, we have to be very firm in, in doing those type of things. But, you know, people have, have responded well with us and they understand that, you know, this is still a business also for us but it's still an outlet for the girls to, to get better and to get some exposure. Gotcha. Right. So now, how is this crisis affecting the, uh, first of all, affecting the tournament? And how is it going to affect the kids that really need this tournament for their last look to get a junior college look or to the Division two school or Divi- actually Division one school? Well, you know, obviously we, we've had to cancel our spring session and, and it was sad because this was our 15th year celebration. So we were going to do some special things uh, this cycle with, with the kids. Um, Recruiting-wise, it's, it's been tough. Uh, that's one of you know my major responsibilities is to help the kids get to the next level. Uh, I, I, let me speak on something else. So every year, what, what people don't realize is as an organization, well, not not really Rose Classic, but Anton, myself, uh, Al Williams down in Atlanta, who, who does Rose Classic, April Gordy in and, and Detroit, we all put together a Final Four party at the Women's Final Four. You probably not, didn't even know about this. No. <laughs> and we get, we get probably every college coach in the country to come to the party. Well, that's how we develop relationships. Okay. We've done that party for probably seven years. So we're a staple at the Final Four every year. So, you know, my relationships with a lot of these college coaches are very, very solid. So getting back to recruiting, you know, it's, I've had to make a lot of phone calls. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's funny, you, while we're on this, I just got a call from Mama University. They're asking about kids and, you know, things of that nature. Um, Social media, definitely, I've, I've, taken to that to, to try to help some of these kids with videos and, and the things of that nature but it's tough man some of these kids are, are, are going to be you know left out in the cold probably at the beginning of the, the college year because we can't physically go to the campus and, and try them out you know especially for the D2 D3 JUCO NAI type of kids you know D, D1 kids we all know who they are we all know what they can do you know, they're pretty much, you know, ready unless they were just kind of under the radar type of kids. Right. Uh, one of my responsibilities, again, is to help identify those kids. And, you know, you got to tell kids the hard truth sometimes. Hey, you're not a Division One kid, but there are opportunities at the Division Two level, the Division Three level. You know, boys basketball is a little bit different than girls basketball. Boys basketball, there's the ultimate NBA money type of goal. Well, I always tell these girls that girls, women's basketball, the ultimate goal is to get your degree. Right. You know, there are pro aspirations, but there's still no pro money. You can make the same amount of money with your college degree going to get you a job. Um, so I, I encourage these girls, don't look at the name on the shirt. You don't. Everybody can't go to UConn. Everybody can't go to Maryland. Right. But there are, you know, you know, Central universities that people don't know about. There are Jacksonville states of the world, and you know we have facilitated a lot of the girls to go to these type of universities that people never heard of. You know, for instance, we sent we helped uh, a girl go to Jacksonville University last year. Well, people were asking, "Is that a Division One school?" Yes, it is a Division One school. Well, how does she know about it? Well, again, that goes to the relationships that we've built at Rose Classic. You know, right? Hey. We, these guys become our friends. Right. One, they want to go to our party every year. 
So <laughs> they want to get to know us. Um, and number two, they know that, you know, the tri-state area is a hotbed of talent. So you would want to get uh, the kids from up here because they're a little bit more gritty, a little bit more tough than, you know, some of the other areas. Right. So, again, it's, it's, been, it's been tough. And sometimes giving these girls the, the harsh truth, that they don't want to hear it. And sometimes they don't want to listen. So, you know, sometimes just like in the boys' game, people will keep going to other people until they hear a yes. Right. And sometimes that, that affects what we try to do with the culture. Uh, but then you do have some some uh, student-athletes that listen and say, hey, yeah, I'd love the opportunity to go to a junior college for a year or two years and improve my game or go to Division two school where it's still high academia and I can have a great four years. Right. Now, do you guys, because, you know, this is another big circuit, this, um, the um, prep schools, do you guys have a big influence on prep schools also for the girls? Uh, or it's not, not as not much as, as men? Not, not as much as the boys. Good. I have helped uh, kids from Canada come over here and play at the prep school level because their opportunities are a little bit different. Okay. Uh, Toronto, the Toronto area, you know, they don't get as much exposure as, say, we do here in the States. So they oftentimes want to send their girls here to high school. Uh, even in Montreal, their system is a little bit different where they go to high school and then they have to go to another secondary school before they finish so sometimes those those better athletes want to come here and go to prep school and, and do that. So I do have some prep school connections. I don't necessarily try to encourage that from girls in the States because, again, a, a lot of times I think the whole reclass thing is to help go to a higher, you know, division school. You know, they don't want to go mid-major. They want to go high-major or they don't want to go division two. They want to go to division one. I think the prep school route is, is oftentimes used for those type of activities. I just don't personally encourage it for, for girls here because, again, it goes back to me saying, uh, don't always look at the name on the shirt because you can get a quality education from schools that you probably never heard about. Right. Now, um, do you have a, a very close connection with the HBCUs? Yes, yes. I, you know, I, where I went to school at Old Dominion University is, is was surrounded by, you know, two HBCUs, Hampton University and Norfolk State University. So I'm very good friends with, you know, obviously those coaches there. I, I go as far as Arkansas Pine Bluff, where wow. <laughs> again people don't know about that. That's a Division One school. Where right. I actually helped uh, a kid from Canada go there last year. Uh, so yeah, we we encourage kids to look at that option again that's that's sometimes they look at it with their their nose in the air but you know then once they go visit it and see the culture oh realize, boy hey this this is for me and and even with myself you know i almost went to to hampton university but you know i chose old dominion uh later on but you know i know what the culture is because i spent time at norfolk state i spent time at hampton so i i know and, you know as young men Going to a school like that, I eyes are wide open because it's some of the prettiest girls you ever see. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't think I could have handled that. That's one of the reasons I, I went to Old Dominion. I, I needed to, to kind of focus on some other things right. instead of, you know, being a wild young man. But, you know, they, they are, are viable options for these kids. And I know those schools recruit heavily to to uh, the area. Um, we, we definitely try to let them know that those options are available and to, to look into it and see what, what it means to be part of a HBCU because right. people always don't know what the meaning is. Right, right. Now, let's talk about the new facility. I only got a glimpse of it because my son sent me a picture of it. It looks outstanding. Talk to me. <laughs> okay, so... so this is not a, a Rose Classic facility, but obviously we, we, we partner with these guys. Uh, Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn Youth Sports Club, uh, uh, my guy Harris, they they had this vision for a long, long time. So it, it, the vision started off, they do a camp every summer, and they do uh, classes and things to help the kids 
with their academics. So uh, the vision was to, to build a gym to kind of house, you know, some basketball facilities, some basketball activities. Uh, and being that we partnered with them in, in so many other avenues, we said, hey, can we use your facility to run some things through Rose Classic? Now, like you said, if you ever go into that facility, you'd be like, oh, wow. Right. This is something, something not only great, but it's needed in our community, you know, they have open runs there, you know, during the week, they, they, they host a lot of high school PSAL games that oh. people don't even realize. Okay. Uh, Mike Toro does a great tournament, uh, Christmas time there with teams from all over the country. So the facility itself is a growing facility, you know, anything we can do to help them, you know, facilitate some things as far as putting our games, some of our games, and we put our, our youth games, our middle school and our, our Biddy, and we started something called Super Biddy, which is the little, little girls. Oh, wow. Uh, in, in that gym. We just started that. Uh, uh, Cleon Silk Hyde, he, he had that idea to kind of put that together. So you get the, 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 the fourth and the fifth graders running around there, uh, throwing the ball up in the air. So that facility has been great to us. Uh, I, I recommend that, you know, anybody who's trying to host a tournament, or, or do some other things, go in there and, and talk with those guys. That They're basketball guys, but they're also educators. So they have different programs that, to help the youth prepare for, you know, SATs, uh, ACTs. Oh, nice. And then, nice. then they do things, you know, just a lot of life skills stuff. You know, some of us still don't know how to open a bank account or, you know, how to act in certain situations. So they, they facilitate a lot of those type of activities too. Being educators, they, they see a bigger picture than just the ball bouncing because as we all know, that ball is going to stop bouncing oh, yeah. one day. Oh, yeah. And, 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 you know, you being a ball player, me being a ball, ball player, it probably stopped bouncing a little bit earlier than we anticipated. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, me being a father who, who has a son, my son's eight, who loves the game. Anton, his daughter loves the game. So we we have to show them something more than basketball. Now, do we, we push them and we, we help them do the things that they can do in, in the basketball spectrum? Absolutely. But I want my son to own the team. Right. You know, right. I think I think Anton has the same vision for his daughter. We don't want to only play, we want to own the team because right. that's in the African American community, we don't see that. So it's good that, you know, guys like us, you know, run Rose Classic and, you know, partner with, you know, great guys such as the Post uh, to see that, yeah, we can do these things, you know, because that's what's missing in our community oftentimes, especially where I come from. I come from a very, very small town. And I always tell people, you know, when I go back home, I'm looking at like a celebrity because I live in New York City. Not because of anything that I've done. It's just <laughs> right. because I live in New York City. <laughs> right. they, they don't understand how can a guy who comes from here live in New York City. I said, well, you know, it, it's not as, as different as you think it is. You know, obviously there's, you know, a, a crime rate and things like that. But I tell them, I'm, scared of, I'm more scared of people from my hometown than I am in New York because wow. at least in New York, there's things to do and there's opportunities. Where I'm from, there's not a lot of opportunities. You know, so uh, I try to give back as much as I can when I go home. But again, they look at me like, uh, wow, you're, you're doing such great things. And, and it's really not that. It's just, you know, a passion of mine. You know, uh, I always say, you know, a lot of guys in my neighborhood where I grew up, it was probably 20, 30 of us, uh, 15 of us are ministers right now. Nice. Uh, I feel like my calling was, and everybody always thought I was going to be a minister, but I feel like my calling is is helping these kids because okay. I had somebody to help me. Right. So you, know, you got to love the game, especially the girls' game, you know, because it's not always on TV. It's not in your face. It's not NBA. So you have to love the game and learn to love the game to be able to participate in it. Right, right. Yeah, I, I definitely noticed the difference between the guys and the women because um, I coached at Bronx Community College for three years, purchased college at three years under men for the men. And then my last three years was at Lehman College for the women's basketball team. And that really took a part where I was like, you know what? I think I might want to stay in the coaching women because they listen more. They're more fundamental. You tell them, all right, 
you know, you try to teach them a trick or two, they work at it harder than a man would. And and you don't get the back talk as much as the guys do. You know, the only thing about if I do, if I ever get back into coaching and, and it's on the guys' circuit, the only part, the only place I want to coach is junior college. I only want to deal with two two year guys. Only reason why I say that is because they're hungry. Like you said, the guys want to go to a name on the shirt. So they'll work harder to get to that name on the shirt. That's the only reason why I'll go back to the if I go to men's, it has to be junior college. Other than that, I I'll rather deal with four year women or even two year women. You know? But Definitely, the women's circuit is definitely big, especially what you guys are doing. Oh, man, you talk about 65 teams, 150 to 200 people trying to get into the tournament. I know the list is about two years long now because I was going to say, I was going to say, well, you know what? I got at least two years to try to get in. So let me put my team in now and make a team by two years. You know what I'm saying? So. But you guys are you guys over there, right? <laughs> so, you know, I definitely want to applaud you guys because you guys are definitely doing big, big things over there. And um, so, knowing that this is going on, whenever it gets lifted, this crisis that's going on, and whenever it gets lifted, you guys are jumping head first right back into it. Or how are your guys going to go about it? Are you going in gradually because of the crisis and scared to make sure people don't get sick and stuff like that? How are you guys going to do it? How, you know, basically how is it going to run for you guys? Well, it, you know what? Knowledge is power. And and I think right now with this whole uh, pandemic, we don't have enough knowledge. You know, would we like to jump right back in it and, and do the things that we, we, we used to do? Absolutely, but what is the new norm? We don't know what the new normal is anymore. Right. You know, I, I um, think about it. You're, you're from my generation. When 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 Magic Johnson made his announcement, you know, we all thought Magic was going to be gone by now. Yes. And we we were terrified of what you know that epidemic was. Yes. Now we're we're at a time in society where we don't have enough facts, and back then we didn't have the facts. Now we have the facts on on what that is, and right, and aggression, and and how to fight it. We don't have enough facts to, to really determine what we're going to do yet. Uh, we would love to be able to say, "Hey, we're going to start road classic next week," but you know, the the fear and 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 listen, I have my own fears because you know. We've been so affected but in the basketball community by this pandemic. You know, we've had one of our best referees pass away from it. So, oh, you man. know, more, more than anything, we we can't even show the proper respect to the, some of the guys who've passed on from this. Right. You know, and, and that within itself is sad and, you know, it's put a damper on the community. So we can't expect parents and kids to just jump back into what we're doing without – having the correct knowledge base. So until we get the right facts, I, I think we're just going to slowly and gradually, you know, try to get back to normal. But again, we don't know what normal is anymore. This is going to change our lives forever. You know, yes. especially our children's lives. Yes. They're going to be able to look back and say, 2020 was a different year. You know, I, I've become an educator all of a sudden. <laughs> and, and, you know, I wasn't always the best of students. And, you know, some of this new stuff that my son is doing, I'm like, wow, uh, I, I think I need to learn it before I can even try to teach you some of it. Right. You know, what happened to, what happened to stacking numbers? Now they're doing numbers all kinds of different ways. So, right. You know, until we know what the new norm is as far as education, as far as, you know, being able to go out in the street and just go have a, you know, a drink or go grocery shopping on a normal level, then we, we don't know what to anticipate. So we, we want to do you know, basketball again. We want to do it again soon, but until we we are all educated enough, I, I don't know what we're going to do. Right, because it would be um, crazy if you <laughs> had rubber gloves on with with masks with the Rhodes Classic mask with the <laughs> logo on it. Yeah. That's crazy. 
a rose glass of fans. Yeah. So maybe that's what we, Come on. we yeah. yeah. No, so. it's not going to happen, you know? And you don't want no one to say you opened the doors up, you started a tournament, even though you had hand sanitizer, you did everything to try to make sure it's clean to the possible. And as soon as one person or two kids get sick, now they're trying to sue you and, and go for everything you got and it's, try to... It's over. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, you definitely well, don't want to... Off and everybody running out the building. We don't, we don't want that. We want, right. we want people to be educated. And the funny thing is, like, we were already practicing, you know, had sanitizer at the door, had things like that at the door. So we were practicing those type of activities anyway. But now it's just a whole different ball game. And, then, and, and mentally, you know, we'll never be the same because you're going... Now someone, when somebody calls, you're going to look at them. You're like, oh, what's going on over there? Right, right. It's a simple, something got in your throat type of thing. So, um, again, until we get the facts and, 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 and are more knowledgeable about what this disease is and how to fight it, we just got to kind of, you know, keep living the lives we, we're, we're living, which is, you know, sad right now. Yes, definitely sad, you know. But, um... We just got to continue. We got to continue staying safe and, and, you know, doing what we need to do. Because you got to remember, a lot of these kids, they don't know social distance now. Like, you know, it's like right now. Like, they still hanging out, going to each other's house. And, like, you know, okay, yeah, you've been my friend for ever since I was little. Okay, what does that mean right now? You might be just carrying it. It's not affecting you. It's not doing anything to you, but you brought it to my house, and now my grandma's sick. But she was fine before you came over. Like, you know, the, and and that's because the parent then left, went to work, and she's home by herself. Oh, come on over. It's, it's all right. My grandma here. It's okay, though. You know, my grandma, grandma let you come over. And, yeah, now grandma's sick. So... Yeah, right. we we all definitely have to be careful with it and um and just take care of what we need to take care of. And I would love to see it get back to normal. I would love to see it because you you guys have a lot of work to do, not just because of the crisis, but because of the girls needing you and needing that tournament for an outlet and knowledge and to be able to advance to going to college and stuff like that. So, you know. It's definitely uh, the give back. We, we call it definitely the give back. And, you know, it's a safe environment too. So, you know, you'll have girls come in there who don't, who are not even playing that day, just sitting in the gym. You know, it's, it's a way to get off the streets. It's a way to be entertained. It's a way to, you know, socialize without, you know, worrying about what's going to happen to you in there. So, um, yeah, the, we, we, we again we would love to be able to get back to that but until we're knowledgeable enough we, we just don't know that right because the Olympics is done yeah that's canceled so you already know summer league is canceled for right now yeah, summer league done. is officially canceled that's crazy yeah, yeah. I, well, well the, even bigger, bigger than that football if football if they don't play football we in trouble if football gets canceled, and because that's late on, that's much much later. Even though the you know the the practice and all that, the preseason is now in the summer. But still, if that's canceled, then we, you know this is going to be the first time ever in history there is no NBA champion. Same with NCAA champion. NCAA. Same, that, same. Just, oh. Question, because I I, um, I spoke to a coach. He's he's the uh, assistant lacrosse coach at Manhattan College. He's saying that, I don't know, because you might know. That's why I want to ask you. He's saying that the NCAA is giving the seniors a fifth year to be able to participate in, this, in the sports. And that's that, for that's baseball, only... baseball, like for yeah, now. For Oh, yep, so it is the true. Small, small sports, they're they're going to give them a, a fifth year, which to me that's going to be kind of interesting because now what do you do with the incoming freshmen? Right. 
in those sports? I mean, are they creating more scholarships? And, and you know, what I'm hearing is some of these schools are cutting back on their budgets for uh, athletics because they can't make any money right now. And, you know, NCAA tournament, you know, provided a lot of money for a lot of these schools. Yeah. So, you know, that's going to be interesting to see, you know, some of these guys who get an extra year because they weren't be able to participate their senior year. Uh, I'm, I'm, that's something I'm, I'm very interested to see how they're going to, how they're going to do it, how baseball is going to, you know, come back from that. And Hey, anything the NCAA is doing to help is, is a plus. So I'm glad to see that they are stepping in, but you know, what about the girls who couldn't play their last basketball games? You know, that's what I'm saying. That's still sad. That's what I'm saying. Like what, so what are they going to do with that? Like it's nothing to it's do. Done. It's done. You can't, you can't do it. Yeah, they 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 are saying they're gonna crown someone just a champion this year. I think they on the on the women's side they're gonna crown Oregon champions this year. Yeah, it, well, how's that fair to South Carolina? Yeah, you know, yeah. Both of them were very good teams. Yeah, you so, you, 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 know, you better not do that. You better not do that. It should be no right, crown, be nobody, no, because Oregon can get 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 beat by anybody at any given night. Right. I don't care. They got right. the top player in the in the universe. Right now, she is on right. top of the pile. She's already signed with the Liberty. <laughs> so, yeah, no. That don't mean they was taking it, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. I, I totally agree. And, and even on the men's side, me being a – I'm a huge UVA fan. So right. I get to say we're still champions for another year. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I was, no, it's over. Y'all done too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> my cousin, cool. my cousin's from he. That's his team too, and when I lost to him in the uh, NCAA last year, he he had mad smack to talk about. So, uh, my son's a Villanova fan, so it's it's like it's like uh, oil and water in this house. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Villanova had won this year, then we won, and, and so we 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 continuously let each other know. Right. Better, so right. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, Kenny, you want to, KP, you want to let anybody know anything? Or you want to shout some people out? or Definitely, you know, want to shout, shout out again Anton Marchand and, and, and uh, Margot Burkhardt. She, Auntie is, is, the, is the backbone of Rose Classic. Many people don't know she stays in that room and does uniforms and, you know, facilitates a lot of the. Uh, the athletic wear for the girls as far as, you know, giving them sports bras and, and shooting shirts and things. She's really the backbone of, of what we do over there. Uh, obviously, um, our security is big, big for us. Uh, oftentimes, you know, Anton is not there. I'm not there. So those guys, you know, take the lead on that. Definitely Mike Toro. Um, I got PD at Bishop Ford. I'm sure you know uh, PD. Um, they they help with the tournament, you know, tremendously. Without without those guys, you know, there would be no tournament. You know, this is not something that you know myself or Anton can ever take credit for. It's just so many pieces behind what we're doing, you know. And then we we ventured out to some other places. Like I said, we, we do a, a, a very good tournament in Atlanta. You know, sponsored by uh, my guy, was facilitated by my guy Al Williams down there. He's a Brooklyn guy who okay. up here. Uh, Norfolk State guy, so you know he's done a great job. We've partnered with some people in Miami to run a pretty good tournament. So, you know, Rose Classic is is again. Yeah, I don't want people to think it's just basketball. Right. It's, it's much much bigger than basketball. It's a it's a family environment. You know, if you don't know about us or or, or haven't been to the gym, I, I recommend you come, especially if you have you know young children who are are interested in playing basketball, and that can be boys or girls because you know. I'm even teaching my son, you know, fundamentals the way a girl learns the fundamentals because I don't know how athletic he's going to be. I don't know, you know, if he'll be able to jump to the sky. I want him to have the IQ and, and the skill set and the fundamentals that, you know, girls have earlier on than more than the boys. So, right. you know, we, we recommend you come in and sit down in the, in the gym and, you know, we always have some hot food in there and have some snacks and, and things like that. And you have a, a, you'll hear a, a great DJ. We, we do uh, old school Sundays where you guys <laughs> our age, get our music played. Uh, 
but we also have Ratchet Saturdays where, you know, some of the music that we don't necessarily listen to. Right, right. The younger crowd listens to, uh, they, they get to enjoy it. So please, if you've never been to Rose Classics, stop by and see see what we're doing. And, you know, we're, we're always looking to bring more people on to help us, you know, facilitate what we're doing and, and grow the game. And, and it's about growing the game, too. And it's about the culture of women's basketball. We are... We are deep in the culture, and we want to keep people in the culture because that's the only way to grow the game. And also, shout out to Nike and, and the people there in, in the city that help us out uh, tremendously with the uniforms and, and you know helping us with you know sneakers if girls need sneakers or um, things of that. You, you never know. Sometimes girls come in there with you know holes in their sneakers and things like that. So we try to help those type of uh, kids out also. Right. Um, so again, shout out to Nike and, and some of the things that they're doing. Also want to give a shout out to Chad Babel. We we, uh, we did a big middle school tournament with May Hoops for the girls. Um, Chad does a tremendous job of, of facilitating that for the boys and he allowed us to come in and, and do some girl stuff. So that's that's been doing very well for the last three years. And and we've grown the game that way also. So, you know, if anything, I want to say just help anybody who can help us build a culture, please come by and help us. And, and, and we're always open to new ideas and, and doing new things. So please run that by us and, and let's keep this culture going. Right. So let everybody know how they can reach out to you and how they can, you know, get in touch with you guys to help out or to try to put a team in for five years down the road now. You know, <laughs> Let, give them um, that information, all your social media, everything. Okay, well, you can follow us on uh, social media at Rose Classic on Instagram, at Rose Classic on, on Twitter, at Rose Classic uh, on Facebook. And, and even if you can't find that, we are online. We have our own website, roseclassic.d1scout.com. Please go in there and, and send us a message or just leave us a message on our social media. Obviously, social media is something we're getting better at because, as you know, as, a, as older guys, you know, right. we don't understand it. Right. The process. We have some young whippersnappers around there who are teaching us uh, to, to get better at, at those type of things. And that's probably the best way to contact us through our social media outlets and, and we try to answer, you know, each and everybody who, who reaches out and, and trying to get in the tournament. Maybe not now, but, you know, a couple of years down the road. <laughs> yeah. My man, KP, I appreciate you for doing this interview, man. And we definitely got to, you know, keep the culture going and pray to God that, you know, all of this stuff lifts and get out of here and we can get back to a semi-normal life again, you know. And I really appreciate you for being on the, the Raw Truth Show on Raw Truth Radio. And uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate man. you having me, man. Uh, uh, just also want to say I do a, a podcast every night, Monday through uh, Friday, uh, on my Instagram page, Kate Pinnell underscore. And the topic is is conversations within the culture. Uh, we have you know local people on there, but I've, I've ventured out to you know the team takeovers of the world, the FBCs of the world, and, and some of these bigger operators. Uh, event operators so the conversations have been great and and we'll culture do that too and obviously that's you know promoted by what the platform that rose class pro- provided for me so if, if anyone wants to check that out at, at night it's every night monday through friday at 9 p.m definitely i'll check that out i'll be on there live with you bro i'll check it out hit your little text in there on the, on the check-in my man <laughs> okay, thanks a lot brother. All right, we'll talk to you soon, brother. You got it. Be safe. All right. Yep, yeah, you too, brother. Let you get a taste. Do you love a taste? Yeah, that's cool. But he ain't like me.